Hi and welcome to a very warm Sunday afternoon in Adelaide. I've been playing with a new iPhone app and I wanted to share it with you. Um, this app has been drawn to my attention by one of my favourite tweeters, Alisi, who often tweets about things to do with QRs and augmented reality in business. This one really caught my eye because it kind of so it seemed to me that I could get rid of using QR codes on my worksheets and just go straight to the point where my students were hovering over and viewing the resource that I wanted them to have without needing to have um, to go to any other website. The app itself also makes it really easy because I simply click and point at something on the page and then I tell it what file to run when it sees that image again. And those files can all be stored on my iPhone. I don't then have to go and upload them to a website and then, you know, find a URL and create a QR code. So it makes it a lot faster as well. So as I was messing about with it around the house, playing with it, I, to be honest, was doing silly things like taking a photograph of my wedding vows and making a picture of my husband and I appear on the top or uh, silly things like and that. It was so easy. I thought I could see a lot of potential here for English for my subject for English and also other educational areas so I thought I'd start by playing with a bit of Shakespeare with it um, so here's what I came up with so here we go I've got my key scene up here stuck to an old monitor I apologize for that but it's the easiest way to get the webcam to look at it for you obviously my students would just have this on their desk and you can see that there are random images all over the text and these images are acting like markers just like the augmented reality markers that you find on standard AR and um, except I've designed them they've literally come from clip art in Word um, and I've just shoved them in and then I've told the app taken a photograph with the app and said this is the marker and then selected something from my iPhone to play so I've recorded on my iPhone myself talking to the students so that when they hover over that marker they see me so why would you do this well it means that I can focus students on particular pieces of language and um, it means they have me almost in a group work situation it means I can have four different groups working on four different areas of the scene and they still have support from me and then we can report back at the end and see have a bit of a discussion about Lord Capulet so in this particular scene this is um, the scene where Lord Capulet goes a bit nuts at his daughter because she refuses to marry Paris. Um, it's also the scene where Romeo and Juliet have just consummated their marriage. I know. And, uh, and they're very much in love. So this part here is the bit, the conversation between Romeo and Juliet, you know, twas the lark, not the nightingale, or twas the nightingale, not the lark, all that kind of thing. All right, so, sort of talking to us about nature, obviously demonstrating Shakespeare's use of language to reflect nature. And on this side we have when Lord Capula enters and he's talking to Juliet in a very similar way, um, using very similar kinds of language. So what I'm, asked, what I'm trying to do is get the students to understand that Shakespeare uses particular le lexical fields or language types to uh, infer a theme, in this case, love, and also be able to argue that he does love his daughter, um, he just has a bit of a quick temper. And this group won't get any further with the language analysis than looking at how much he loves her. So they'll be quite surprised when the other group analyses how much he's angry and hates her, and they can have a little conversation about that. So let's just show how the technology is helping that to happen. So bear in mind that we've probably watched this scene or read this scene, and now we're uh, close analysing it linguistically. All right, so let's get the phone, the iPhone, and turn on the Orasma app. It's as simple as that. Okay, so my students would be at their desk with this on the table. Okay, so I'm going to come around this way. So they would read it through, remind themselves, they'd know basically what the objectives of the lesson are, and then it would be up to them to work out, you know, how that's happening. So they would just put the camera, point the camera on the iPhone at the uh, marker on the top of the paper the and they'll hear me. These two are most definitely in love. So look at the language. Tell me how many times you see words to do with nature and see if you can make any judgments about how Shakespeare uses language to infer the theme of love. And the video will just keep repeating until they the move the so camera the away. Alright, so they can come back and listen to that question again and again and again any time they like. But you can see there's no video there. This isn't a video paper. This isn't an iPad. I'm not requ um, required to have that. All I need is a, an iPhone. So if the kids have got an iPhone or an Android phone that has this app on it, then they can access this document and they can see all the hidden bits and all the hidden clues. So this one's just asking, it's me talking to them, asking them to find out or to highlight the number of words to do with the nature. It's starting to think about that. Then on this side, you'll see there's a lot more going on. This one is a key question, and this one is an extension. 
This one is a different task. This is a key question and this is an extension. So I'm using it for differentiation as well um, to allow my students to build if they choose to. Um, and in fact, if they go to this one, the video says, um, have you answered this one? Don't bother unless you've answered this one. But again, it's the same principle. I just um, wave the camera over the top. When Lord Capulet comes in, who do you think he's talking to? When Lord Capulet comes Yep, so when Lord Capulet comes when in, Capulet comes in who do you think, who do you he's, think talking he's talking to? So obviously they'll look at the fact that he's entered with the nurse. I want them to think about who he's talking to in this first part, whether it's Juliet or not. And then um, with this next question, I think this is the one where I tell them... Don't answer this one unless you've looked at the little red question mark. This is an extension. Yeah, it is an extension. The one underneath that is a completely separate task. Can you draw the metaphor that Shakespeare gives Lord Capulet in this part of the scene? What do you notice? So you get the idea of how this works. I think this has got an awful lot of potential. What I'm interested in knowing is if I share with you this worksheet and I share with you the URLs for Erasmus so you can put those markers in your phone, are you then able to use this yourself somewhere else in the world? Because that would be really interesting. Because if not, there's a lot of work here. If we can all share, we can all halve the load. So uh, let's just see what happens.